Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are BSG, and we are about to show you some Skulljagger Revolt of the Westigans by Django Storm. Take it away, friend. Thank you, Argic. Yeah, this is uh, certainly one of a one of a kind SNES game, and uh, what I'm very happy to show off to you all. Uh, it's uh, certainly very 90s, as you will see. There will be swords. There will be uh, bubblegum, <laughs> so it will be all kinds of faction, and uh, yeah, let's just go into it, and I'll uh, talk you through the rest really. There's also a lot of lore involved, and I hope I can explain some of that too, so uh, let's do the countdown in three, two, one, go. Okay, we start off here, and this is where everything takes place. This is the island of Westica, and it kind of looks like a certain continent. Uh, it's probably not entirely the same, but it looks similar enough, I guess. So this is a uh, platformer uh, where you play as Storm Jackson, uh, who is uh, basically tr uh, trying to defeat uh, Skulljagger, uh, who is in the name of the game. Um, so it's, it's not actually uh, the hero of the game uh, who is in the name, but uh, the enemy. And Skulljagger is uh, the person who is uh, keeping the uh, people of the island of Vesica, uh, yeah, in reps really, and uh, or you know, imprisoned or uh, enslaved, so we, we basically try to save them and we try to defeat Skulljagger and we do that by just uh, going through the game, waving our sword, uh, collecting gems uh, and blowing bubblegum as well. You see enough instances of that and a lot of the strats in this uh, speed game are actually uh, derived from using uh, gum at certain places and that will save significant amounts of time. So we picked up a first instance there and that's uh, cherry bubblegum that you see right there and it's Something we will not be using in the same level right away, but we will sort of carry it over into subsequent levels. But first we have to get over this bridge, uh, just make sure that we hit these flies um, that tend to throw rocks at a bit of a higher uh, or a lower level so that we don't get crushed by them. Bit of RNG right there sometimes, uh, kind of depending on how those flies uh, travel. And also, yeah, this, this soundtrack is... Uh, really good also, so get ready for some very bass heavy tunes and uh, just, it, it pops really, it's uh, really amazing. Okay, we're almost done with the level. Um, yeah, and every level ends with this extra gem and most of all this victory pose. You'll see this victory pose very, very, very often, so get ready for that. All right, so now the story tells us that we are uh, going into a warehouse. Um, and we're surrounded by so-called Keltish Company. All these guards are part of a Keltish Company, apparently. Also these uh, dudes who are throwing skulls at me, apparently. And we basically have to climb up these uh, chains, really. We can do that pretty quickly and sk skip a couple of uh, uh, platforms there, which is nice. I gotta make sure that I don't grab uh, certain barrels because they tend to contain certain types of gum uh, that I won't be needing right away. Like I said, I'm gonna carry uh, stuff off like this uh, cherry gum into uh, subsequent levels. And you'll see soon enough where I'm gonna use it. Let's see, going down the stairs. These blue gems, by the way, these deep blue gems are um, checkpoints. I can start from there. And this is where I use my uh, cherry gum, skips a bit of this uh, section. You can also use other types of gum with that, but this is by far the fastest way to do this. Um, and with the right setup, it can be uh, done very quickly, so that's really cool. And that was this level already. Also, I missed the split there. <laughs> Alright, in part three. Uh, yeah, we're going through the streets of Tuskamesh, and uh, this is a city or a town that we will be returning to pretty frequently, apparently. Uh, it's, as it's very central in the story. And now we have this tune that kind of sounds like I have the Tiger. Especially in the beginning. You can always sing along to it. Also shout out to Pimp's Bakery. The thing is I uh, have this, uh, these red gems and you, as you saw already they uh, are throwing uh, red projectiles. And with that uh, I can uh, basically uh, protect myself uh, much better and it does make the game a lot safer for as long as you have them at least. There we go. So what I've now grabbed is uh, Great Bubblegum. It's 
pretty much the ultimate boss killer. Uh, I'll be using it in v practically half of the boss fights in this game. So that's gonna be uh, pretty awesome. So you can do some hops over here. That's a damage boost, that's fine. Usually um, what happens is um, if I have green and red gems, uh, it always sacrifices my red gems first before I lose my green gems. And it's kind of like in Sonic the Hedgehog for instance, except you cannot get your gems back, so that's kind of unfortunate. But you still have to be care kind of careful. Okay, so uh, this is Skull Jagger. We already wound up fighting him, uh, and this won't be the, uh, the only time we will be fighting him. Um, there will be quite a few more times. But it starts off here, and as you saw, this is a really easy boss fight thanks to uh, using Bubblegum here. And in the end, we get this passcode, Cruel Man, Cruel Bird. So the password system in this game is uh, pretty much word-based. So you put together a string of words, and um, if you get the right combination, you can start off from a certain chapter. And this leads us to chapter 2, where we sneak onto this uh, gemrolled chip, as they say. These gems are actually called uh, gemrolds, and I guess they uh, sort of use them to uh, collect gemrolds. Um, it's a pretty big ship. We mostly climb onto these sails, try to uh, avoid all the bats, and also the snap rats, uh, as they're called. They have these uh, massive tails, but you can jump over them if you uh, time it exactly right. So. It doesn't have to be a big deal, but they still have pretty big headboxes, so still nothing to be sneezed at. Yeah, crew, my crew buried very deep, indeed. Alright. So we're still onto the same ship, um, except we're in this level, we're gonna go a little bit deeper. You see, that's enough. It's actually uh, a pretty deep ship, so. And also, lots of lag. This game is known to have uh, some very lag-heavy sequences, and that's probably not just because of enemies on screen. Also, what you saw there, um, this is the one time it appears, it's this uh, invincibility mask. It's actually a pretty neat item in a certain way, because it allows you to be invincible. The only downside is you cannot really move around uh, with it. Um, well, you can move around with it, but you can't really move up ropes or something. You can't really do anything besides just uh, moving left and right and jumping, really. And it does wear off after a while, but uh, it does sort of refer to a thing in the story that's called a Mask Day, which is uh, supposedly the only day that the people of Westica are truly free, and they talk about uh, stories from uh, years ago, working in general mines and such. Alright. That was our uh, trip to uh, uh, to the ship. We're back in town once again. We now have coconuts. I call them surprise coconuts because they tend to uh, surprise you. Speaking of surprises, um, suddenly there's these uh, bat spawns that come out of nowhere. I I'm not sure why, but you have to watch out for that. <laughs> I can imagine that being very daunting if you play this casually for the first time, but... Uh... Anyway, we just uh, jump down here. Totally fine. We jump up here too. This looks really dangerous, but it's not. So, despite these uh, jumping uh, bugs, it's actually uh, relatively safe to do this. Okay, I'm deliberately grabbing this gem because I'm gonna set up for a damage boost here, which basically involves me jumping past this guard to the exit, pretty much. Still one uh, of them throwing a grenade, but there we go. Again, the beautiful victory pose. Yeah, th this game in the beginning especially can be uh, pretty tough, yeah. I mean, uh, it took me a while before I uh, got around to uh, playing it uh, somewhat easier. So yeah, uh, as you would have possibly expected after all these snap rats, of course our boss is, our boss is gonna be a massive uh, sized uh, snap rat. And we're gonna use the same uh, method as before, just use the great bubble gun. And this one we actually got from the ship in 2-2, so... Uh, just carried it over. Had to make sure um, to activate it just before I grabbed that other bubble gum, which is orange bubble gum. We officially don't really use it in the speedrun, but it has its uses. Alright, so chapter 3, um, stuff happens. The funny thing is, um, there's stuff happening in the story that you don't see in the game. Like, I'm not even uh, supposed to be traveling alone, but I'm supposed to be traveling with a group of friends and also my father. Um, but you know, they don't appear in the game as such, and um, 
I can tell you that you know my dad gets uh, captured every uh, like all the time, and you know that that's a thing that happens in his story, but you don't really see that in the game. So it's an interesting thing about uh, how does it translate like one on one. Okay, so coming up is where I'm gonna be grabbing this bubble gum, and I'm gonna specifically use this for a sort of launch. Uh, in order to skip some platforming, so let's see if that works. Yeah, I can actually jump really high with this, uh, with this gum. Let's see if I can do this. Still need to get a little bit higher. There we go. The funny thing is, um, you can break your gum against a cloud, or you can break that bubble against a clouds, really, uh, reg regardless of which gum you have, so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, that does uh, skip some platforming there, uh, it's pretty nice. I must say though, uh, it can be really hard to set it up for some reason, like I try to launch myself there, but it doesn't always work in <laughs> the way that I'd want it. It tends to be kind of inconsistent that way. I think it's inputs or something. Okay, so we got a cherry from the last uh, level, um, and I'm gonna use another cherry strat here, which is actually a pretty significant one, and also one of the scarier ones to set up, because it's uh, kind of precise. You'll see that soon enough. Just gonna head over here. Ooh, still made that. Was a bit scary. Just gonna jump over all these bats. Okay, I'm gonna stock up on some uh, gems here. Because I lost those. There we go. Both green and red is always good. These platforms are nothing uh, to worry about. There's one barrel that I hope to not pick up because it has uh, gray bubble gum. Uh, and I certainly don't need that right away. <laughs> so. There we go. Okay, this is the part that needs some concentration. Uh, let's see if we can do that. It's kind of precise, so here we go. Let's see. There we go. I hope I still got the setup. Okay, that was still good. That was kind of scary. I nearly thought I jinxed it, but that escapes a lot of chain climbing there. And uh, yeah. But, th but that's actually one of the major skips, really. I'm gonna stay here for a bit because there's another cherry over here and I'm gonna use that in the second level, so the whole thing of using cherries in subsequent levels still continues. Yeah, the music does uh, slow down with the lag. It's kind of an interesting uh, thing, really, kind of regardless of where you're at. If, it's, if the game slows down, the music slows down. So this is where I use the next cherry bubble gum and that skips a bit of platforming early on, which is kind of nice really because these uh, guys that are throwing skulls, they uh, can be pretty tough to deal with, especially if you don't have any gems, um, because uh, you can only really attack them if you uh, have, um, head towards them whilst they're ducking and there's this moving platform basically, so it can be uh, a bit tougher. but. Everything becomes easier as long as you have um, gems to set up for damage boosts. There we go, great bubble gum once again. Don't worry about these flies, that's totally fine. This one too. So a lot of these strats were uh, found through a, I, I should say, speedrunning show uh, last December called uh, Speed Bump which is uh, organized by Smite and Author Blues, and they did uh, feature this uh, game uh, as, uh, in order to uh, get people to uh, speedrun this and uh, see if they could uh, find even better strats. And a lot of the cherry strats, or pretty much all of them, basically uh, have emerged from that, and they have them made the speedrun a lot more exciting. And hey, we are fighting Skull Jagger once again. So one thing we do here is we fight on the right side because it does actually minimize the lag. If you go further to the left, uh, you see a couple of more spikes appear and it does add to the lag for some reason. So that's also speeding up things. Also Skulljack and can walk in the air, no big deal. Now we get the next passcode, Big Wild Angry Fly. And there sure were a lot of Big Wild Angry Flies in that part. Anyway, now according to chapter 4, the war begins. Um, Basically, uh, we're heading over to the lighthouse, and we're gonna pretty much fight back, really. Okay, this level is pretty short, there's not much really to talk about here, so uh, probably a good time for the nations, or if there's anything to plug, uh, go ahead and go for it. Alright, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to do an announcement first. Uh, since we are a bit ahead of schedule, we are gonna put... Uh, 
an additional run right after this one. It's going to be The Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past. No major glitches, Master Sword by Zeta, so that's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be a great run. And uh, right now we have no donations, but uh, remember guys, we are the Benelux Speedrunners Gathering. Uh, we organize bi-monthly gatherings in the Benelux for Speedrunners, but due to the situation surrounding COVID-19, we're currently doing our extended BSG online event uh, instead of our week-long annual, what we will be doing, with streamers from both the Benelux and the rest of the world bringing you entertainment during the lockdown. So thank you very much, and uh, keep enjoying the run. Alrighty. So we just went through this level. Now we're introduced to snakes uh, because everybody loves snakes, right? <laughs> also uh, flying ninjas, lots of them. That one was especially uh, one of those ninjas that tends to fly or jump really, really far. So I tried to take it out in advance, really. And also we have uh, birds that are throwing coconuts. So if you thought you saw less of uh, coconuts, um, you're in for a surprise. As you may have noticed, uh, some of the songs are getting uh, sort of reused, um, except they are sort of like modulated, so they sound a little bit differently, but it's basically the same song. Which I always found interesting, uh, really. So, th in terms of music, there's not necessarily that much variety, but what is there is pretty awesome, actually, and just uh, slapping, basically, and uh, really good. Alright, this part can be a bit RNG-esque. Um, it kind of depends on how the fly appears. Like, I would say 90% of the time it tends to zigzag into uh, view, but there's a time where it appears from behind me and that's always really scary, so I still have to watch out for that. And uh, again, having gems is uh, definitely uh, a good way uh, to get around that. Okay, no statue, no big deal. I mean, as long as you have uh, gems, uh, you can just uh, hit and walk underneath. Otherwise, you have to take it a little bit safer. Uh, it usually takes a couple of hits to take out, but... Okay, uh, this level is also uh, featuring a very significant skip. Uh, basically, we're gonna do nothing but this. We're gonna just fly through the level just using uh, this cherry bubble gum. This is also one of the big time saves that was found during a speed bump. And believe me, it's such a relief really, uh, because there used to be like a lot of climbing ladders and you'd have to uh, take out ninjas. And the funny thing is, uh, these ninjas would usually uh, sort of drop down on the floor and before that they have iframes so you cannot even hit them beforehand. So this does actually uh, leave out all of that and it does speed up everything very, very much. Okay, and that's almost the end of the level. We just uh, skipped a lot of elevator action and all kinds of things and whatnot, so... There we go, that's the end of the level. <laughs> Yeah, bubblegum float mechanics, aren't they the best? It's very 90s, but anyway. Okay. Okay, there we go. Just had to make sure that the setup for this was done right initially, because it can be a bit uh, weird to set up. But uh, this is a bit of a different boss fight, because we're fighting this group of battle dogs. And now we have this green bubblegum. I'm not sure what flavor it's supposed to be, so if you have an idea, chat, uh, feel free to uh, put in suggestions. Well, we're basically setting ourselves up here to deal three hits per cycle, and that does actually make things a bit easier. That's also one of the more relatively recent discoveries that you can set it up this way, and that does uh, make it a lot faster. At least it's the uh, fastest way that I know of so far that you can uh, beat with this, uh, that you can beat this boss. And that's the end of chapter four. We get the passcode "Fly Home Lazy Sword," and. Uh, that's actually the last uh, passport that we're gonna get in this game. So is that almost the end of the game? Um, no. There's chapter 5 through chapter 7 still. And we have to play it all back to back. <laughs> so yay. Good luck us. Whenever you have time, we do have a small donation. Uh, yeah, sure, go for it. We have five dollars from Dollar Thread saying, "Big wild angry fly, Storm Jackson win." <laughs> Thank you very much for five dollars. Thanks, Fred. Okay, uh, yeah, this level can be a bit scary in the beginning because, uh, again, uh, the birds with uh, coconuts are uh, returning, and uh, 
it's easy enough to lose any uh, type of gems, as you can see. They sort of fly forwards and backwards and whatnot, so it can be a bit scary. But we got through that part at least, uh, leading up to this checkpoint, so that's one worry less. So now we got these uh, steep hills, uh, and as you may have expected, the snacks will return soon as well. Um, so that, for those who are fans of snacks, um, good news. Gonna use this coconut to destroy this one at least. Also some surprise birds, we have to watch out for that. That can be one of the things that can be pretty uh, daunting to deal with uh, casually, I guess. Also these uh, snakes that are lying down and that you really have to struggle to hit, really. Um, you, you really have to position yourself very uh, uh, precisely in order to deal with them. Anyway, it's time for uh, another cherry strut very soon, because um, we did get the cherry from the boss fight earlier, and we're gonna use it in 5-2. P, could be grass. Yeah, it could be all kinds of things, I guess. So yeah, we basically use it here um, to skip this platform, really. We just go up in the air vertically. Um, the funny thing is, if you activate this gum on uh, moving platforms, it instantly activates. You don't have to do any other uh, work. You just, uh, you know, you stand there and um, you fly. You don't even have to uh, blow it up repeatedly because that's what you normally do with a uh, cherry bubble gum, really. You can also um, use both of the bubble gum blowing inputs. It sounds a bit of a weird way to describe it, but uh, the, the two of the inputs that do that, uh, you can use that to um, blow it up even faster. And that's what I sort of do with uh, some of these uh, sections, like you saw earlier, uh, like in the second level, uh, to make it even faster. So I can sort of easily set it up mid-air. But there you go. See, uh, I'm a bit low on gems, I need to watch out, I think. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna get myself up here. Um, I don't think there's really much of an easier way to do this faster, because um, most of the gums that you can use here... Let's see, there we go. Uh, yeah, let's talk about it first. Um, I totally forgot to say, we're gonna do a warp here. If you play casually, sometimes you run to uh, rocks that you destroy and suddenly you get this uh, fantasy zone type of thing. Which uh, is also unexpected. In this case, it brings us uh, to chapter 6 already. So, yeah, so much for uh, chapter 5. <laughs> it does roughly skip like 2 minutes of the speedrun thing. Like, 5-3 uh, is really short and the boss fight is also not super long really. Yeah, uh, I totally forgot to talk about the booklet. Um, it was mentioned in the chat, but uh, the, um, the basically uh, the full story is provided w uh, with the fully boxed copy of this game. So there's like a nearly 80 page uh, story, really. And uh, like I was uh, hinting at before, uh, the, the, the story is actually uh, quite a bit more detailed than uh, is actually shown in the game. I think if you would have roughly uh, translated what um, you know, you would have uh, read in the game that would have made for a very different uh, game altogether. Nothing uh, of this like, really. So nothing like this. So now we are in the last city. Um, also, a thing I did mention is apparently our sword can talk, and the voice inside of the sword tells us to go to the lost city. So we eventually were going there, and uh, through this warp, we're finally here. So yay! And now we uh, encounter lizards and ghosts. And like any other ghosts, uh, they tend to usually multiply, so that's perfectly fine. Yeah, and also uh, the st uh, manual also tells uh, of certain hints uh, that you can sort of uh, find and un uh, uncover and uh, solve, really. And uh, it's kind of really interesting that way. Uh, they were certainly ambitious in that uh, setup, and I thought I was on it uh, very uh, admirable. Uh, if anything, uh, even if uh, you know the rest of the game itself story was is a bit more stripped down in a sense, I'm very glad that they. Uh, Decide to do that. It does uh, add something extra, if anything. Okay, 6-2 is especially very light-heavy. Um, 
as you can tell from the multitude of ghosts that appear here, because uh, it's a, literally a ghost town. And funny enough, it doesn't necessarily slow down the music, but... Okay, I couldn't make that cycle. That's a thing, I guess, uh, with this level, is uh, sometimes you try to get certain cycles in, uh, you can't quite get there uh, right away. Sometimes you have to wait, it kind of depends on uh, the timing, really. Okay, this we can just uh, jump down, no worries there. And now we wait for this. Yeah, we're getting close uh, to uh, the end of this level. We picked up another cherry, and uh, <laughs> it took up as no surprise at this point, I guess, but we're gonna use it again for a cherry strat. There's like, I, I don't know how many, I've lost count, really. Also, you can totally jump there, you don't have to worry about those ghosts. Yeah, pretty much always go the same way, so if you just jump down from underneath, uh, you're usually guaranteed to grab it without taking damage. Okay, now this actually um, does skip a part that's uh, partially kind of scary and partially very boring. And in the end it does make things faster, so uh, let's see if we can do that. Okay, that's fine. These uh, ghosts that are zigzagging, they're always kind of uh, scary at times. Let's see? Alright, and another instance of insta gum activation via moving platform. But yeah, that almost brings us to the end for this level. It just really skip a lot. We move uh, past these plasma blasters. They actually have a function in the story. Um, because the thing is, uh, we're supposed to fight Skulljagger at the end of this uh, chapter. But the game de uh, designers were like, nah, we're not going to do that. Let's actually uh, do something with ghosts. Because I know people like ghosts, right? So what can, what can we do? Well, make an even bigger ghost. So, just like the bigger snap rate before, we fight a bigger ghost. Because that's pretty much according to expectation. So we have to uh, deal a certain amount of hits. Oh, it stays up in the air. Basically try to uh, deal these hits. It does usually uh, fly up, or it does go a certain direction, and I usually hope it's moving away from me so I can uh, deal uh, subsequent hits a bit more safer. There we go. Wasn't entirely, uh, entirely clean, but still uh, did the job. Alrighty. So, uh, I was mentioning the Plasma Blasters. Uh, apparently, they were uh, Storm Jackson and his friends were using the Plasma Blaster to uh, fire a hole in the ground, and Skull Jagger disappears through that or something, and uh, it's quite different than what you see here. But anyway, this is the final battle. This is uh, where uh, the final showdown is and everything. And, yeah, we got one more of these uh, cherry skips uh, right here. We have to watch out for these clouds once again, because uh, these, these clouds are really sharp, apparently. I never knew either, but uh, there you go. That's that's what this game tells you. Clouds are sharp, yo. Alright. I would say this the rest of this level almost feels like a mixtape of uh, previous levels. Like, there's the bear claws that you saw in one of the previous levels, and there's the bridge that you saw in the first level. It kind of feels like it's uh, sort of thrown together, uh, really. It's kind of funny, really, as, as if you know, like, okay, reminder, this is the last uh, chapter after all. Don't check any skulls. Hmm. Good point. Well, we have uh, fought Skullchecker before, multiple times. We might find him again. First we go through another uh, city. If you're uh, on like PB or World Record Pace, this can be a uh, very uh, tricky level. Like this instance, I tried to defeat that guard uh, before that stone drops down on me. There's a weird thing with um, ducking and attacking in uh, that you can only do it in a certain order if you don't have any uh, uh, red gems. Because um, if you do um, attack first and then duck, it doesn't register your attack. And if you duck and attack, then it does do what you want to do. So you have to watch out for that. If you have red gems, then it doesn't matter because you will fire off the projectile anyway. So that's pretty neat. Don't, don't worry about that grenade. <laughs> it's far away enough that, you know, no worries whatsoever. 
Okay, the rest of this level is not too bad. It's basically preparing for uh, pretty much just one of the scariest levels in the game, really. And there's our victory pose. I was because um, they do say Ingo was a sort of greeting between them, uh, Storm Jackson and his friends. I always imagine him saying Ingo while when he does that uh, uh, victory pose. Anyway, one more round of uh, the Eye of the Tiger, so uh, hope you're all ready. There's lots of enemies that are suddenly appearing. That's kind of the recurring theme in this uh, level. So I have to be sort of careful. Let's see? Oh, I didn't quite hit him. That's fine. I usually try to do this so that I fire the projectile first and then jump. Um, it's far away enough that I can usually uh, do that. Let's see. I hope this works. Uh, I did lose one of my gems there, so it's kind of scary. I'm gonna see if I can uh, pull this off somehow. That was close enough. <laughs> Let's see. That's a double. Very nice. Okay. Two snap rats. You can usually not jump over them uh, if there are two of them. Okay. Scary jump. Oops. There we go. That could be a very uh, scary jump. But if you jump early enough, uh, it should be sort of manageable to make that. Also, those cans that you see there, you can't fire them off. And yes, that was a thing I didn't notice until uh, after I started speedrunning this. But you can sort of fire it uh, background uh, enemies. And that way you can also get things like gems or also one-ups. And that's a good thing because it's very hard to get them otherwise. Uh, you would have to collect like 25 gems uh, in order to get a, a one-up. And I, as you may have seen, uh, seeing how easy it is to take damage, that can be a tough one. Also, don't worry, this is totally fine. I know, what, I know where this is going. All right. And that brings us to the final level. There's one more uh, showdown with uh, Skull Jagger. And this la this fight is a lot easier with uh, Great Bubble. Come, let me tell you that. So let's see, just gonna go over here. And there, no hands. Okay, time stops as soon as uh, I do my victory pose, as soon as I've dealt the last hit, and it's going to be now, and that's time. And explosions. <laughs> Alright, and then they rounded off with a bit of a story. Uh, they say, Ingava Storm, your amazing skill and bravery have at last freed Westica from the cruel dominion of Captain Skulljagger. On this fine historic day, watch in triumph as rank upon rank of Keltish troops once a scourge of Westica retreat across the ocean in defeat. And at your hands, Storm Jackson, Skull Jagger himself, has suffered the ultimate disgrace. Not only has he been defeated and his empire taken away, but he's been magically transformed into the lowliest creature of all, a rat. That's actually what you don't see. Um, if you wait there for a bit, uh, you do see uh, Skull Jagger transform into a rat and wander off. That's actually a thing that happens. And they say, celebrate storms, dance and sing through the streets of Tashkamesh. And we sure have seen those streets very often, but uh, yeah. But be forewarned, even as you celebrate, a rat is making its way quickly through the nighttime jungle, scurrying toward the lost city of Urnham. Its purpose, one can only guess. But this much can be said, there may be a time, Storm Jackson, when you once again be called upon to save Wessica and the world from a cruel monster named Skulljagger. <laughs> Yeah, Skulljagger died for purple bubblegum, basically. You know what the funny thing is? Uh, I initially uh, learned this not knowing that there was a, uh, a great bubblegum in 7-3. <clears throat> and if you play it like the normal way, it's a lot tougher. Uh, the only way that I've been able to deal with uh, Skulljagger is by uh, basically attacking him from the left side of the screen and sort of duck and then just mash attack, really. And there's still like a very big chance that Storm Jackson just waltzes past you and still kills you. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was a lot uh, riskier than this is. And um, this strat makes it a, like 100% safer. I'll say 100 to 10%, but uh, there you go. And of course, they were hinting at the sequel. Um, for those who may have Googled it, no, it didn't happen. Unfortunately, um, it would have been uh, funny though to see what they would have done with this uh, type of floor because it was very, uh, 
very ambitious for sure and uh, kind of compelling in a way I find. But uh, yeah, that's the run. Uh, so thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and um, if you want to learn the run, if you want to learn this game, uh, don't hesitate to hit me up on uh, any of the social channels. Uh, I'm more than willing to help out and uh, yeah, thanks to uh, BC at home for uh, laying this in and uh, shouts to the other runners of this uh, game. I'll be back uh, the next few days with a couple more runs, so hopefully I'll see you then. Uh, until then, enjoy the rest. Uh, there's going to be lots of good stuff coming up. And be sure to keep donating and stay safe. And uh, that's it for me. So, take care.